He's called the anointing. Every Christian has the anointing. If you are saved, you have it, you possess it, you own it, it is there. The anointing is the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit designed to do his work in your life. God has turned everything in history over to his son. It is only by your bringing glory to the son that the spirit kicks on. Jesus Christ privately and publicly must be able to be exalted in your life. Give the anointing a chance. Put it first. Take the written word. Put it in the face of the Holy Spirit. Do it on the front end. And let's see what programming God brings up into your life. We've been studying the names of the Holy Spirit. Because those names indicate his function. Indicate his work. Remember now, this third member of the Trinity is the one given to do work on earth on behalf of the Godhead in heaven. God the Father was the the point person in the Old Testament. Jesus the Son was the point person on earth during the Gospels. God the Holy Spirit is the point person during this which we call the church age. He is that member of the Trinity who has been assigned to act on their behalf in history. The Father functions from the third heaven. The Son sits on his right hand to rule spiritually in heaven to earth. And he does that through the third member of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. I want to look at this name given to him, this identification, this symbol in 1 John 2. He's called the anointing. This word is a word that speaks to a specific work of the Holy Spirit that you don't want to leave home without. For many people, the concept of the anointing balls down to an emotional experience. They feel something, and so they think they are feeling the anointed. When someone preaches a great sermon or sings a great song, and you were ministered to it or by it, you might say that was an anointed sermon or that was an anointed song. What you're speaking about is the fact that there seemed to have been an emotive spiritual impact of what was said or what was heard on you. And most certainly the anointing by the anointed one can produce an emotive response. But I want to suggest to you that the concept of the anointing goes much deeper than how you feel at a given moment. And if you come to understand this aspect of the third member of the Trinity's work, you will find it life transforming. Now, the first thing we want to establish is this. Every Christian has the anointing. If you are saved, if you have accepted Jesus Christ, You have, whatever this anointing is, we're going to explain in a moment, you have it, you possess it, you own it, it is there. This anointing speaks of the indwelling presence and work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Let me say that again. The anointing is the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit designed to do his work in your life. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 says that you have the Holy Spirit who indwells you. Well, in the New Testament, when Jesus said, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit, I'm going to give him to you as a permanent resident in your life 
and he's going to anoint you. So every Christian has the anointing, which is why he says in verse 20, you have an anointing and you all know. So you can't be a Christian and not be anointed. If you are a Christian, you have the anointing. So the key is knowing what it is and how to use it so you can benefit from it. Because he says you all possess it and you all have the anointing. The job of the anointing coming from the holy anointed one, the Holy Spirit, is to illuminate, bring to light, elucidate in your life God's messaging. His job is to take from up there and show it to you down here. The job of the anointing is to give you the data from heaven to your operation and my operation in history. If you don't know you have it and you don't know how to use it, you won't benefit from it even though you possess it. And it is unfortunate today that many Christians and maybe even most Christians don't know that they have it, don't know how to use it, and therefore don't get benefit from it. The job of this anointing is to extract from heaven messaging so that you can have it available to you on earth so that you can use it. Now, the way the anointing works, as we said by review of last week, the Holy Spirit, when you become a Christian, enters your human spirit. The Holy Spirit enters the human spirit. Your spirit was given to you to give you the capacity to communicate with God. When you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus sent, infiltrates your human spirit. That is the anointing, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in your human spirit. Your human spirit that's now been anointed by the Holy Spirit is inside your soul. Your soul is your self-identity. It's your personhood. The reason you know you exist is because you have a soul. You lose the soul, the body doesn't function because the body is dependent upon the soul to express life. The Holy Spirit enters the human spirit, making the human spirit alive to God. The human spirit exists in the soul so that the soul can get data from the human spirit that's been anointed by the Holy Spirit, which feeds the human spirit information to distribute to the soul. When the soul gets the information from the human spirit that has been illuminated by the Holy Spirit, the soul feeds that data to the body. When the body gets the data from the soul that is received from the human spirit that has been anointed by the Holy Spirit, the body now functions differently because it has new data that has been in it. The reason why we have problems with our bodies is we have infection in our soul. But the reason we have infection in our soul is because we have a human spirit that's been contaminated by sin. But when the anointing enters the human spirit, because the anointing is perfect, the human spirit is now perfect because it has been anointed. So you've got a perfect resident in your human spirit that now wants to give information to your infected soul. And when the Holy Spirit that now invades your human spirit sends out data that is received, adopted in your soul, your soul begins to get healed. When the soul is getting disinfected because of the infectedness due to the expression of the human spirit that's been invaded by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it then tells the body what to do. It tells the mind what to think. It tells the eyes what to see. It tells the ears what to hear. It tells the leg where to move because it's gotten new information about how to function. 
So if you want to fix your body, you've got to clean up your soul. But if you want to clean up your soul, it's got to get information from your spirit. But to get information correctly from your spirit, it's got to be inhabited by the anointing. So that is how the anointing flows. The anointing is divine messaging that you have now been qualified to receive because the Holy Spirit has now entered into your human spirit. So that is the concept. It authorizes you. It authorizes you to receive information from heaven for living your life on earth. It is a divine authorization for that. Now that I have introduced, because I just finished the introduction, Now that I have introduced the concept of the anointing, the role of the Holy Spirit to indwell the life of the believer in order to infect the soul with the messaging of God for the transformation of the life, we want to take you now into a little deeper understanding of how it works. That is given to us in... 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The passage I would love for you to read this week is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 through chapter 3, verse 3. Okay? So go all the way to chapter 3, verse 3. Read that once a day, every day, but I want to go over it with you now. Here it is, verse 9. But it is written, things which eyes have not seen and ear have not heard, and which have not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. For to us, God revealed them through his spirit. He's not talking about heaven. He's talking about earth because he says God has already revealed it. When the anointing is turned on and turned up, you get to see things eyes cannot see. That's what verse 9 says. When the anointing is turned on and turned up, you get to hear things ears have not heard. When the anointing is turned on and turned up, you get to think things that you would not normally think. In other words, the anointing is taking you beyond the physical. It is showing you what your eyes can't see. It is letting you hear what your ears don't audibly pick up. It is letting you perceive what you didn't normally think on your own. It is taking you out of your physical into a spiritual reality so that the physical is now perceiving, experiencing, seeing, and hearing things that is outside of its normal physical realm. Or as I like to say, If all you see is what you see, you do not see all there is to be seen. If you are limited to your five senses, then you will not get divine messaging because even though you are a Christian, the dimmer switch is off or it's so low, you can't see the light shining. So there must be the ability to see beyond the physical, the eye, the ear, and your own human mind. Look at what he goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 2. He says, we receive them from the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. Remember, the anointing is the Spirit. The Spirit has a search engine. Google. The Spirit Googles God. It knows the deep things of God. In the next verse, he says, no one knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of a man. No one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit, the anointing, the spirit of God. So the spirit of God has a search engine. It says he searches the deep things of God. So he can go deep like a deep sea diver into the thinking of God And his job is to transfer God's thoughts to your life. Just like when you Google something on Google and you pull up stuff you didn't know to transfer it to your understanding. 
So we have exposed to us the World Wide Web, but believers have exposed to them the knowledge of God. And he says, and it's the job of the Spirit. So, so let, me, let me clarify something before we go any deeper. The job of the Spirit is to reach into the mind of God and transfer to the thoughts, sights, and ears of the believer. His job is to take truth and make it your experience, to bring it, to make it your reality, not just for information, but for transformation. Now notice what he goes on and says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. Here's what I like about the anointing. It doesn't cost you anything. Once you accept Jesus Christ, it's freely given to you. So it's available to every believer and it's available for free. You don't have to buy the anointing, okay? Now, which things we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom. Keep that in your mind because that's going to be key in a moment. You don't get this by secular understanding. You don't get this by popular viewpoint. Once you introduce human wisdom, you've turned down the dimmer switch and the light will not shine because you've compromised the data. You put a virus in the programming. And so he says, not taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. So the spirit of God dips into the mind of God since he is the third member of the Godhead and he brings to the mind of man or into the spirit of a man that which he cannot see physically, cannot hear audibly, and would never think naturally, but he has revealed them unto us. That's what the anointing does. Now, here's the issue. Verse 14. The natural man receives not the Spirit of God. Let me put it another way. The non-Christian does not have the anointing. Now he goes to another person. He says in verse 15, but he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. The natural man doesn't have a receiver. The spiritual man not only has a receiver, he keeps his receiver on. The spiritual man can appraise or evaluate all things because a spiritual person sends everything through a spiritual grid. You are only a spiritual Christian if you consistently send all data through a spiritual grid. So that means you keep the dimmer up all the time because everything is going through the grid of spiritual words combined with spiritual thoughts. And guess what he says you have in verse 16? You have the mind of Christ. You know what it is to have the mind of Christ? It means Jesus is thinking his thoughts in your brain by means of the Holy Spirit who is the anointing. And what thoughts is Jesus thinking in you? Thoughts that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and thoughts you wouldn't have thought about thinking about even if you would have thought to think it because he's bringing his thoughts to your brain because you have the mind of Christ. Then there's a third group. Chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. He says, and I, brethren, brethren, you're Christians, could not speak to you as a spiritual man, but as men of flesh, as infants in Christ. I gave you milk to drink and not solid food, for you were not able to receive it. Indeed, even now you are not able, for you are still fleshly. And he concludes the verse by saying, you walk like mere men. You walk like a natural man. Your life is not any different than the non-Christian. Paul went to Corinth in 50 AD. He wrote back to them 1 Corinthians in 55 AD. So there was a five-year gap 
between when he went there and led them to Christ, when they got the anointing, and when he writes them five years later. He says, after five years, you ought to be operating on the anointing by now. After five years, you ought to be spiritual and consistent with keeping the dimmer switch up. But he says, after five years, you still walking like you've never been saved in the first place. So if you're here and you've been saved for five years or more, and you're still not walking in the spirit, you're still not living in the anointing, but you're still walking like mere men, you've wasted five years of spiritual growth. In fact, in the book of Hebrews, he condemns them because they've been saved for 30 years and still don't know how to walk in the anointing. You can be in church for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You can spend your life in church and never get divine programming because you are not walking in the anointing. So the anointing is the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer to illuminate divine insight into your sight, your ears, and your thoughts. But he says you can't do that if you are operating on human wisdom. Now back to 1 John. Chapter 2, he says to them, here's what I want you to do. If you want the anointing to be turned on and turned up, Here's what I want you to do. He says in verse uh, 24, as for you, let that abide in you, which you've heard from the beginning. Verse 27, as for you, the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you have no need for anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you all things and is true and not a lie, just as it has taught you, you abide in him. You see that word abide? All, all, many times I read the word abide. We saw that last week too. It means you have to hang out in the anointing. You can't visit it on Sunday. You must hang out. Abide means to hang out. You must hang out in the anointing. That is, you must hang out in a divinely oriented perspective. Let me put it another way. Your first question must be, what does God say or think about the matter? If that's not your first question, what does God say or think about the matter? That means you're not hanging out in the anointing. If God's perspective is the last place you go, that means that by the time you get to God, you have been contaminated with a lie. He says, no liars of the truth. He's writing about the Antichrist who had come in and had confused these believers because they were getting wrong information from the wrong source that was contaminating their thinking. So by the time they got to God's perspective, they were so corrupted by the secular perspective that they were not able to inculcate the divine perspective. But when you flip it as a lifestyle, not as a visit, when you begin to ask the question, what does God say and what does God think? Holy Spirit, reveal it to me. You have turned on the receiver for it to bring down the programming to illuminate the mind and the thoughts. Notice what he says. He says, you have the anointing and you do not have need for anyone to teach you. Now, that's interesting. It's interesting, number one, because he's teaching them right now. He's writing to them, teaching them about the anointing. It's interesting because the Bible says God gives teachers to the church. The Bible, it's interesting because Bible tells you to come and, and to, to study the word of God in the collective worship, which includes teaching. It's interesting because Paul says to Timothy to teach the word and to preach the word in season and out of season. So why would he say, if you have the anointing, you don't need anyone to teach you for the anointing teaches you? Ah, okay. Well, remember who he's dealing with. He's dealing with the Antichrist who are lying to them. So let me tell you what he's teach, saying when he says, you don't have a need for anyone to teach you. He is saying, you no longer need to be led by secular thinking, secular information, and secular instructors. You no longer need to, to use the world for your data. 
for your spiritual data. You don't first go to the world. You don't need them to teach you how to live, how to work, how to have a family, how to be single, how to have, how, you don't need them. Start with me because then the anointing will teach you. That's why the psalmist prayed in Psalm 119, 18, open my eyes that I might see. Many of us are being attacked physically and we don't know what to do because we don't see anything spiritually. All we see is what we see. And if all you see is what you see, you'll never see all that God is doing because you don't have the eyes to do it. But here's how the Holy Spirit works. See, I said, when I preach, I give you national news. I'm giving you cable news because what I'm giving you is something general applies to everybody. But when you have the anointing, the Holy Spirit gives you local news. He gives you news for your life, for your situation, for your problem, for your pain, for your needs. Because you need one kind of program. You need another kind of program. You need another kind of program. You need another kind of program. You have a different job. You got a different family. Your kids are different. Your finances are different. So you need local programming for the general problem. I'm giving you cable news, but you have the anointing. And I can't answer all of your specific answers, but you have somebody inside who'll give you thoughts you didn't think, let you see what you couldn't see, bring ideas you didn't have and you already have them because you all have them, he says. You already have the anointing. Give the anointing a chance. Put it first. Make it priority. Take the written word. Put it in the face of the Holy Spirit. Do it on the front end, and let's see what programming God brings up into your life. In the midst of the beauty of the Rocky Mountains, I do have a problem. I'm surrounded by that which blocks me being able to receive an internet or satellite signal. In other words, my surroundings are getting in the way of me being able to pick up something from out there. God never wants our surroundings on earth to get in the way of receiving messaging from heaven. That's why he's given every believer what the Bible calls the anointing. The anointing is that work of the Holy Spirit where he delivers heavenly messages to our earthly environment. It is this connection as we abide with the Spirit that God can speak specifically into our earthly circumstances, situations, challenges, difficulties, and need for clarity and guidance to show us which way God wants us to move and how he wants us to take the next step in life. Don't leave home without it. Yes, we're surrounded by the rocks and boulders of earth, but don't lose sight of heaven because you leave the Holy Spirit behind. The Holy Spirit, the anointing, is the key to keep the messages of heaven reaching you no matter where you are situated on earth.